We would like to thank our host this evening, Travis Credit Union, and to Vinnie Langdon for filming tonight's event. Our, time our timekeeper tonight is Bernice Kalin. She will be letting candidates know when they are approaching their allotted time for responses to the questions and keeping us all on track. Thank you, Bernice, for assisting us tonight. None of tonight's candidates have had the opportunity to know in advance what questions will be asked, as well as what issues these questions will cover. At this time, I am pleased to introduce our moderator for this evening, the Director of Operations with the Vacaville Chamber of Commerce, Julie Sabat. Chamber of Commerce 2014 candidate forums. We are now ready to begin the forum for the City of Vacaville City Council election. This is a forum where each candidate will be asked a series of questions and allowed to answer. This is not a debate, and we do not encourage our candidates in attempting to refute or rebut how their opponent answers their questions. We appreciate you all being here tonight to support your candidate. We ask that members of the audience refrain from applause or any verbal comments during these proceedings. After the introduction of the candidates, you will be asked to give a round of applause. At the conclusion of this forum, I will once again ask for a round of applause in recognition of the effort that will have taken place here tonight. Each candidate will have three minutes for opening comments. We will then proceed to the question and answer portion of this forum. Each candidate has up to three minutes to answer each question. We will finish up with closing statements Again, with three minutes for each candidate. <coughs> candidates, please pay close attention to the timekeeper. When the light turns yellow, you have only 10 seconds to wrap up your answer. At the three minute mark, the light will turn red, and a sound will be heard, and your time is up. There will not be any questions from the audience. I would now like to introduce the three hopefuls for the City of Abbeville City Council election. In alphabetical order, Kara Fox, Realtor, Curtis Hunt, City Councilman, Mitch Mashburn, City Councilman. <laughs> we will now begin with opening remarks. The order in which the candidates will speak was predetermined using a blind draw. This will be rotated after each question. We will begin with Kara Fox. You have three minutes. Good evening, Chamber members, citizens of Vacaville, and supporters. Thank you, Travis Federal Credit Union, for hosting this event. My name is Kara Fox, and I am running for the office of Vacaville City Council. I'm a third generation, lifelong Vacaville resident. My husband, Ed Rapasarda, and I live in the downtown area of the city where we're raising our children. I'm a local business owner, member of the chamber, and strong supporter of my hometown. I have a desire to keep our city safe and thrive as a growing community. One of my first jobs was working for my father and grandfather's contracting company on Main Street. Although the Creamery building no longer stands, my memories continue. I watched as Vacaville develop that area and even though it was hard to say goodbye to the landmarks, our town square is an amazing improvement and must be supported. My family has deep roots when it comes to Vacaville traditions, from planning commission, community services development, military service, athletics, Fiesta Day participants, and of course raising our families here. I was taught from an early age to be involved in my community. I feel that my duty is to serve people, and it not only shows up in my career choice, but also in my passion to serve this great city. And when elected, I feel confident that our city will prosper under my leadership. I understand the values and critical elements that our city must regain to ensure our success. <clears throat> we have been affected by the downturn in this economy. City services have been cut, and incomes have been sacrificed. 
I myself have had a reduction in over 50% of my income through this challenging time. And now, as we move forward through this period and begin to rebuild, we must have clear and innovative vision for Vacaville. As a council member, I look forward to communicating with our citizens and businesses in expressing the goals and desires of this great community. We must come together, unified, and set our standards high so that we can proactively work towards achieving our goals. I'm honored to be able to share my visions with you tonight, and I reach out to my hometown community. Thank you very much. Councilman Mashburn, you have three minutes. Thank you. My name is Mitch Mashburn, and thank you for having me here tonight. Thank you to the Chamber, citizens of Vacaville, to all of you for coming out and spending your evening with us. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm uh, 47 years old. I am a married father of three wonderful little girls, and we make our residence here in Vacaville. And I have lived here for the last 17 years. Um, <clears throat> my family has lived in Solano County for over 100 years, so I have some deep roots here. Um, I've served the city on the city council for the last four, uh, four years, as of this year, and the planning commission prior to that. And I have served the citizens of Solano County for 26 years with the sheriff's office, where I work currently as our operations commander. And <clears throat> some of the things that that has enabled me to do are obtain training in budgeting, finance, program management, a lot of the things that I hopefully bring to the council as a benefit to be able to um, help us move forward in these new economic times. Everything has changed. All the, all the, the rules have changed with uh, us coming out of the Great Recession. I want to continue on the council because I feel that we need to be strategic about coming out of the recession. We need to be strategic about the use of our resources, about the growth of our infrastructure, and about development as we move forward in order to assure that Vacaville remains the city that it is and that I have a place to raise my children that is uh, <clears throat> unchanged but continues to grow. And thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank the Chamber as well as Travis for hosting this event and how important it is for the voters to have a clear understanding of the candidates. Vacaville is a unique place to work, play, and live, and I plan on keeping it that way. I am running on my record of strong, innovative, solution-driven, and independent leadership. With the support of my council, I'm a leader with good ideas that get the job done. How many times in the last years have you seen in the paper Vacaville offers the development incentives, an idea brought to the council by Curtis Hunt. Vacaville offers a street a budget stabilization, an idea that was supported by the city council. This is fairly frequent in the city of Vacaville. I have 28 years of public administration background. My last job was building city coalitions to improve the lives of young people. I have a detailed understanding of government, public policy, and in this time of history, a clear, substantive, knowledgeable understanding of the budget. I have faithfully served with dignity, integrity, as an engaged member of your city council since 2007. I was honored to serve as your vice mayor from 2008 to 2010. Prior to that, I served six years on the Community Services Commission. Four of those years, I was the chair of that commission. My passion, engagement, and commitment is indicated by the fact that I serve on many committees. I serve on the Tertiary Water Treatment Plant Committee, which I started, the Audit Committee, Economic Development Committee, which I started along with Ron Roulette, Senior Roundtable, Youth Roundtable. I was chair of the Oversight Committee, which is the Redevelopment Elimination, past chair of the School District Select Committee, past chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee with Prisons, and I serve on the Board of Directors for the Department of uh, Education Department as well as the Economic Development Corporation. I gain valuable insights and ideas with my involvement in the California League of Cities. I'm past president of the North Bay Division, which has 31 cities and four counties. I currently serve as a board member for the California League of Cities. There are only 50 board members out of 400, 
and 38 cities. I am dedicated to public service. I've dedicated my entire life to public service as a probation officer, counselor, community services manager. In closing, I'm humbly seeking your vote for this election. With your support, I'll continue to provide the ideas that will lead the city into the next generation of prosperity. I will make decisions that benefit all of the citizens of Vacaville, and I want your vote in November. Thank you, and now on to the questions. Some of these are multi-part questions that we firmly believe fit together, so please be prepared to take notes. I can repeat the question when it comes to your turn if you would prefer. I will now ask the first question. What are the three top business issues facing Vacaville, and if elected as a city council member, what will you do to address them? Councilman Mashburn, you have three minutes. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, the three top business issues that I see uh, for the city of Vacaville are one, the, um, the completion first of the general plan, because the general plan is, is key to development, which is a large portion of, of business and industry within Vacaville. It is the plan that lays out our, um, our growth in the city for the next 20 years, and to that end, there are several business parks, there are uh, innumerable um, uh, housing developments and, and other job-creating factors in the general plan and all of its elements that affect business here. I think the second thing that is um, important to uh, economic development and business in the city of Vacaville that we really need to work on is the um, strategic the strategic development of our resources. And when I say that, what I mean is that we have a limited amount of capital for the purposes of investment in resources in order to be able to attract businesses and industry to Vacaville. And there are certain resources that allow us to target specific industries. For an example, Genentech, one of the resources that was key for them is water. So our ability to process water in large amounts and uh, provide them with the resource required in order to do their business was key in their decision to come here. Um, those, those types of strategic investments on the city's part will be very important to business in the city of Vacaville moving forward. And I think lastly is to address several regional issues, but most of those revolve around public safety. We need to make sure that we have a safe environment for the labor force that would support economic development. When I say that, when industries and businesses are looking to locate in a city, they're looking for a place not only for the business, but for the people who work for that business. So that the city is safe, so that they feel like it's a place where they can, they can grow their business and where their customers can come to and feel safe doing business. Um, and to that end, I think we need to assure that we're strategic about bringing those resources back online and back to a level that is uh, acceptable and supportive of what we were uh, in times past when the economy was better. Um, what, what can I do to help these things occur? Well, the first is uh, um, working diligently with the other council members to assure that the general plan is completed and being a participating member of that process. Listening to the business community, making sure that those elements that in the business plan are important to your business are heard and are, and are addressed. Secondly is uh, when we talk about strategically bringing um, our infrastructure up, we need to have a, a Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, bringing business to Vacaville has been one of the things I've really focused on with the Economic Development Subcommittee that we established and the Economic Committees. But I see three things that need to, to be important. We have to make sure we have the proper infrastructure. Businesses are looking for certain things. They're looking for high-speed cable access. They're looking for transportation. They're looking for water and they're looking for enough power. Some of it has to do with having the electrical circuits necessary to bring the types of business you want. We need to follow the general plan, or actually it's the strategic plan that talks about economic vitality. That, by the way, is the second thing in our strategic plan, is economic vitality. And we need to make sure that we continue to have a vision that supports uh, businesses. When ICON moved here, they said the number one thing that attracted them here 
was a business-friendly council. The uh, gentleman who put ICON in stood up in front of people and said it was the business-friendly council, and that's why I came to Vacaville. We need to streamline our application process to make sure that when businesses come in, they know they can get their applications done, they can get it done in a timely fashion. I've talked to several developers and business people, and that's their biggest concern is I need to know when it happens. We've implemented a program called Permit Tuesdays, and over the counter, you can come in and get your permits on Tuesdays. We have staffed it up, we have everybody there, and we'll do all the plan checks. So if you come in Tuesday, within an hour and a half, you've got your permit. We need to continue that. We need to have flexible cost. Uh, I believe that in our academic, when we did our incentive programs, we put thresholds in. And if you've got a business that's going to generate a certain tax revenue, we'll actually adjust the cost. Uh, we make those kinds of deals. And finally, I think the last thing before my light goes off is um, we need to really make sure that we do workforce development. What a lot of businesses are looking for is an education pool that will have people that are ready to fit into the jobs. Workforce development cannot be overshadowed. We need a career path for our students. They need to develop skills necessary. And so again, the three things, infrastructure, business-friendly vision, and work, workforce development are the things I think will bring businesses. Thank you. Karen Fox, you have three minutes. Okay, well I definitely think um, three of the top issues facing Vacaville are one, attracting the high quality businesses to our community that will create the jobs um, that the city is looking for, especially with talk of building new homes um, and our city growing. We definitely need to look at where these, you know, our community members are going to be working. Um, I also think that it's very important that we work with our state government and um, and local officials to minimize regulations to go ahead and get businesses into the city and lift some of that, that, that the burden of what our, our businesses are facing when they come into the city. Um, third, I would like to encourage a close working relationship with the Chamber of Commerce and the city. And I feel like some of this is already taking place right now, but I feel like it could be developed even greater. I know that the chamber has started a program, um, you know, where they're working with the city to create some mentoring programs and things like that. I think that'll definitely help the efficiency that businesses need when they come into our city to be able to start their business in a, in a timely manner. <coughs> because right now that process is delayed. And, you know, that's what I hear from community members is that uh, the process is not efficient. So I would like to see that change. Thank you. Members of the Vacaville Planning Commission recently stated that the general plan is absolutely the wrong proposal for Vacaville and is overly ambitious in the commercial area. Do you agree or disagree? Please give us your perspective. Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, the general plan has been a three and a half year process and cost us about $3.6 million. It's a very important document. It's reviewed every 20 years. Uh, I have, and being incumbent, you kind of know my voting record. I voted against the general plan every time. It's been a four to one vote. Uh, the reason I voted against the general plan was I felt the build out, particularly at east of Leisure, Leisure Town, was too aggressive. 4,962 houses. It created traffic. The other thing was the lack of variety of homes. Uh, Vacaville doesn't have a housing shortage. We have 5,000 houses that are currently ready to be built. But Vacaville does have a shortage of three types of housing. We have a shortage of houses for the young people to get their first house. They're called millenniums. We do not have the opportunity in Vacaville to purchase houses. We need a housing element that will allow us to do that. We have a shortage of senior houses where independent people can live. And finally, we have a shortage on the other end of executive houses. So we actually have houses on, in the books that aren't built. But again, I haven't supported that uh, for the reason that is included in the, the draft of the Environmental Impact Report. At the Planning Commission, they approved two parts of the general plan. They approved the 
environmental impact report, and they approved the uh, energy part about sub sustainable communities. The part that wasn't approved was the housing and land use element. Uh, I do not support uh, that many houses. The plan called for industrial and manufacturing development that's unrealistic. And for, from my perspective, we need to adopt a general plan land use that would more accurately reflect uh, the infill options. I do think that there's some room on the east of Leisure Town that, could, that we could develop uh, where Brighton Landing is, and we could probably develop one more uh, project near Fry. Now what's going to happen to the general plan, just for your information, is going to come up to the council in October, and we're going to hear some questions about whether the numbers were right. I'm this, I've been through this process before. And then we'll have some questions about whether the numbers are right. Then we're going to hear some options to try to do environmental impact reports on each of the plans. Both of those are not adequate. We need to reassess where we are at Vacaville. Vacaville does not need 15,900 houses that are currently identified in the general plan. So I support a more reasonable option, and I'm going to support at the council when it comes to us uh, the option that would include uh, more reasons. So thank you. Tara Fox, you have three minutes. As far as the general, general plan goes, I do not support the general, general plan update as it stands today. I think that there are some areas that need to be addressed. Um, definitely, from what I hear from residents and clients of mine, is that traffic is definitely an issue um, with the general plan and, and the growth that is being discussed right now. Um, housing, obviously, if we're looking to increase the housing, that's going to add the traffic element there. And I can understand why that is an issue for people, because it is a dangerous situation. Services are not supported in that area, in South Town, in that area of town yet. The city has not established the fire you know, traffic control, lights, schools, and things, other services that need to be supplied out into that area. And I think we really need to focus on making sure those services are available out in that area prior to the development. Um, also, I would like to promote the infill of vacant, land, vacant lots um, throughout the city because there are still a lot of infill areas that we could expand to prior to looking to stretch our city out. Um, if this plan is still undergoing review when elected, I will complete my due diligence prior to making any decisions and obviously would like to meet with the residents and businesses of the city. I have watched the Planning Commission updates on this plan and I feel that overall we're moving in the right direction and I understand that future councils also can amend this plan in the future. So even though we make a decision and move forward, if there are any issues, we can come back to that and amend the plan. Thank you. Councilman Mashburn. Can you repeat the question one more time? Yes. <clears throat> Members of the Vacaville Planning Commission recently stated that the general plan is absolutely the wrong proposal for Vacaville and is overly ambitious in the commercial area. Do you agree or disagree? Please give us your perspective. Well, to be asked if I agree or disagree with the overall general plan, I would say that it's still in the development phase from the perspective of the council in that it's going to be presented and there is still an opportunity for the council to make changes to that general plan and that's, that's the purpose and intent of that. So <clears throat> do I feel that there are issues that, that may revolve around the, the housing element of the general plan? That may well be traffic issues, that may well be but the gist of the question, I believe, is about commercial development in the general plan. And I think that one of the things that we have to look at when we talk about development from a commercial perspective is that we need to realize that Vacaville is located in a key location. We sit between three major metropolitan areas in Sacramento, San Francisco, and uh, San Jose. In that, we are attractive for the purposes of industry we are attractive for the purposes of location of a labor pool. And as we develop this plan, we also have to understand that it's a 20-year plan. We're working with a plan right now that's 20 years old. 
and looking 20 years into the future where we have the possibility of having a population in this world of 7.5 billion people, where our urban areas are going to grow exponentially, we need to be able to position Vacaville to be a resource for those large urban areas and to be a place where people want to come and live that's a viable and very, very nice community. But we also have to be able to attract business here to support our local labor and local industry. And to that end, I think that the general plan is not necessarily overly ambitious. I think it might need some tweaking in the, in the direction that we're going with uh, commercial industry because we might need to be more strategic about it and target specific industries rather than paint something with such a broad brush. But I think that the general plan speaks to land use in specific areas and that those areas in all, uh, in all uh, of the planning, for all planning purposes, are good industrial areas. They're located in areas that are in good proximity to the freeway, to I-80, to other industrial uses, to um, expected potential growth areas for, for our um, housing element, where we may be putting in executive level homes, where we may be able to make changes in order to support the labor pool that, that those commercial uh, developers are looking for. So I think that the commercial element of the general plan is appropriate, it just needs a little tweak. What role does the have you taken personally in economic development that has benefited Vacaville? What is your personal vision for economic development in the next four years? What more do you think the city could do to stay competitive in attracting good jobs? Kara Fox, you have three minutes. What role have you taken personally in economic development that has benefited Vacaville? What is your personal vision for economic development in the next four years? What more do you think the city could do to stay competitive in attracting good jobs? You have three minutes. So I guess I can um, probably, <coughs> as far as my role that I have taken personally um, to create economic development in the city is that I am a local business owner. I hire local people. I work in this city. And I promote back of business on a daily basis. It's important to note that the city is in existence for the people and not the other way around. I am currently active supporting my community through participation in events, volunteering for nonprofits and school district, and I make a habit to shop local, eat local, and hire local. Um, I think that there are some ways that we could develop, um, you know, we could have some economic development in the future. I think that our relationships between the city and the chamber, obviously, as I mentioned before, are um, very important. I know that there is a new program that has been put out by the Economic Development Committee, and I think that this... Um, this incentive program for businesses is very important to take a look at through this recovery process. Vacaville is at a crossroads right now. We have recovered our general reserve fund um, to a significant amount at this time, but we are still operating in a, a deficit. So I feel that it is important to address this and not feel like we have excess funds um, I do feel like these programs to draw businesses into the community are important because this does increase the revenues for the city. And at this point, that's what we're looking for, is definitely some increased revenues. Um, this, um, the Economic Development Incentive Program will reach out to 
a broad spectrum of people, including retail uh, businesses, office and industrial, to go ahead and create more jobs for our community, and uh, residential housing contractors. There will be some permits issued at a lower rate to go ahead and, and help out with the housing um, community. So I, I, I believe that this... Councilman Mashburn, you have three minutes. Can I ask you to repeat the question one more time? <coughs> what role have you taken personally in economic development that has benefited Vacaville? What is your personal vision for economic development in the next four years? What more do you think the city could do to stay competitive in attracting good jobs? Okay. Um, well, on a personal level, since uh, uh, becoming a member of the council, I've worked really diligently to try and bring industry here with my fellow council members and with city staff. Uh, um, and as a result, we have ICON now in the city of Vacaville. Um, I've worked with local developers uh, on some of the many projects that you've seen come forth in Vacaville, some of the new housing start that we've seen come out, um, and some of the new developments. I worked with uh, DVBID when they needed support uh, for downtown, and so that they could uh, continue with some of the, the uh, entertainment venues and those things that are bringing business to the downtown district. Um, uh, worked hard on the budget to make sure that we could do that. And I worked, at, uh, as Councilman Hunt said a moment ago, with council and staff to make sure that we have our processes in order in the city so that it's easier for business to do business in the city of Vacaville. And we will continue, we will continue to be committed to making those improvements and listening to you and hearing your, what you have to say and making those changes necessary to make it easier to do business here. Now, when we talk about my vision, um, you heard me talk earlier about st strategic investment in infrastructure and services. I think that's one of the things that's key to economic development for us. Again, it's keeping uh, Vacaville a beautiful, vital place to live, work and play, as our, our city's motto would be. Um, I think that uh, to that end, we have to look at those revenues that are slowly coming back up and determine where we're going to place those to make sure that we are attractive to industry and business and also to their customers who come here and, and uh, spend their day and shop. We have to de develop regional relationships. As you heard me say earlier, we are part of a region that sits directly between some vast urban areas and recognizing that and developing partnerships with the city of Fairfield, with the city of Dixon, with the state of California that allow us to bring business and industry here where it may not necessarily be to Vacaville, it might be to the city of Fairfield. But those folks are going to shop here and those folks may live here and work in Fairfield. We need to recognize that we're part of a region and we need to um, look at trying to attract some industry here, forming coalitions and partnerships with our neighbors in order to be able to do so. And lastly, we need to look at inter, uh, intercompatibility uh, of business. And when I say that, what I mean is we need to look not only at the industry, but at the local infrastructure of businesses that support that industry and do everything we can to make it possible for them uh, to be, to be in existence and to be there for those industries. And we need to market them when we go out and look for those industries and those businesses to come to Vacaville. Well, we need to say, look, we have these businesses here who can support you, who are, who are good partners. Thank you. Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. I'm going to need more time on this question. So. <laughs> I tried. It was so. Uh, so, what is my personal role in economic development? Well, I started the economic development. I didn't even get time. So. <laughs> I didn't get time. Uh, I'm done. Uh, so, uh, I actually started the economic development uh, Curtis, task force. Hold on one second. Okay. Is okay. I threw her off with the need more time. Are you ready to go, Bernie? No. Okay. Something is wrong here. It worked out perfect. Now you saw me. Go. Oh, there you go. All right. And Fine. Go. Thank you. Um, I actually started the Economic Development Task Force. I know some of you out here actually sat in our offices, and we started designing that. And so through that, we've had the Economic Development Subcommittee, and our chair is actually in the audience. I've worked a lot with the Downtown Improvement District, and I, I'm at almost every event, and I've been very supportive of that. Uh, you know, it's important to know that economic development right now is highly competitive. It's not something that you do in a vacuum. We compete with a lot of people, and I was the one that lobbied to reclassify Jeremy Craig to an economic development uh, director position. 
And people ask me, why did you pick the assistant city manager? Because a lot of the decisions were getting uh, side, sideways when the people who were doing economic development were talking to department heads, and department heads then wouldn't do what they should have done. So we needed somebody with a little you know, juice, somebody with a little bit of authority to take that over. <coughs> Icon, uh, Mitch didn't mention it, but all of our city council members went to dinner with Kurt. Uh, we all, I went to Sacramento to dinner, and he was there, and I went. We actually went out of our way to lobby Icon. Uh, each one of us had dinner with him at one different at different times. Nobody was together, so we're sure. Um, so, um, but um, we also, you know, I've also been involved, and I know that a lot of economic decisions now are not made in person. People look at web pages when they do searches to see where your business is going to go. They don't send anybody out anymore. They go on your web page and they look at your web page design, they look at your school districts and they look at all that scores and they make the decisions there. And finally, I've been working on a project with Competitive Power Ventures to try to do, we have the trifecta and unfortunately it's gotten sideways a little bit, but out where the, tri the tertiary water treatment plant is, we have the, the high wire, we were talking about using our treated water to cool the turbines, and we also have a gas underneath there and it's the trifecta. And if we were to get that, we could sell energy and make three or four million dollars a year. So economic development, and then the last thing I want to say is that uh, I get to be, it's really an honor, but I get to be on the Economic Development Corporation with Sandy Person. And we do, we really evaluate developments and we look at where the best places are. And Mitch is right, Vacaville is a gym, uh, particularly in the biotech industry. And one of the decisions our council made, and Mitch too, was we could have cut the water off to Genentech when water was tight, but we kept the water out there to make sure that when Genentech was ready to improve, we were ready to take advantage of that. So a lot of economic development in the last few years has been positioning, and I know there's several people that served on that committee and we talked about it, but Vacaville's in good position and we are ready to uh, benefit from this economic recovery. Thank you. In general, where is Opportunity Hill? How does residential development contribute to the success of Opportunity Hill in downtown Vacaville? Councilman Mashburn, you have three minutes. An opportunity to prep. Okay. So, Opportunity Hill sits right off of, uh, of, of Monta Vista Avenue, and it's very key. It's right in the center of Vacaville, and it is a gateway to downtown Vacaville. It's a gateway to uh, uh, the northeast corner of Vacaville. It is, um, it is also a representation of a little bit of everything that is Vacaville. Um, just above Opportunity Hill sits Vine Street up there on the corner, up over on the side. You know, over here to the right and down, there's a little bit of, of, of business and, and and some development down there. And then you have the downtown that's just below it. So it is central to everything. Opportunity Hill was um, was moving forward rapidly under redevelopment. Unfortunately, we lost that. The city is again trying to be very strategic about how we move forward with Opportunity Hill. We are still including and 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 making some housing elements and decisions there that will provide some housing opportunities for people who work in Vacaville to live in Vacaville and and to be able to stay in that area. We're trying to make those improvements so that the area is appropriate when you look at it as a gateway uh, to those communities. It, it is um, the architecture, the structure of the building, the cleanliness of the area, um, some of the elements of the community that make it a community. When we talk about the public garden that's about to go in out there um, that our Father's House is helping with. Those, those, are, those are all things that help make Opportunity Hill a great place. And so. Um, Moving forward, I think that as long as we continue that process and we continue to look at um, smart development there and, and using those few remaining pieces of property that are there uh, to the advantage of the uh, community, I think it'll be a, a gem in the, within the city of Vacaville and it will help contribute to the downtown, to those businesses down on Monta Vista and, and it's something we will be able to be very proud of. Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. Thank you. 
Uh, Opportunity Hill is a very important project. The city started planning that in 2008. We went through a master plan. We hired a consultant, did a master plan. And the concept was that in 2008, we had 13 permits pulled. We were in a truly, truly a huge recession. So what we thought we should do is prepare ourselves when it comes out, we'll have this master plan done, and it'll work out. So the master plan calls for a neoclassical design where the bottom of the Opportunity Hill is for retail, office space, uh, commercial use. The tops, like you see maybe in Petaluma and some of those other areas, would be for uh, people to live. Downtown needs residents. Look at Sacramento. The reason they're putting those multi-high story apartments downtown is they recognize the importance of what happens if you don't have residents downtown. Restaurants, nighttime activities. We need restaurant, we need downtown development, and we need apartments, and we need something that's affordable. The, uh, the other thing about that Opportunity Hill is that you may have heard about the state coming out with uh, PDAs, uh, which is priority development areas, and that's places that you can put areas. Opportunity Hill is one of those because of its central location to downtown. So if we can put a project in there that would meet our arena application, would meet the uh, housing needs, uh, we could get a bag sort of off our backs, if you will, and we'll be able to fulfill their needs by putting housing down there. Now the kind of housing that we need down there is we need a mixed sort of housing. We don't need all low income housing. We don't need all, but we should have some affordable products in there. We should have some middle and moderate projects, and we should have projects that are described by a bag above the mean. And uh, a, you know, everybody worries about these uh, Opportunity Hill, but the important things of having a project that fits ABAG's requirements is the consequences of not meeting their requirements. We have a housing element that we do every four to eight years. If we don't meet that housing element, it doesn't get certified, three things happen. They declare your general plan void and they eliminate your general plan. Two, they remove the land use authority from city council. If you have an uncertified housing element, your city council doesn't get to make land use. And the third thing that they'll do if we don't meet their requirements They'll stop all funding for us for transportation projects, housing projects. So the consequences for failing to meet ABAG's recommendations is pretty severe. And so we really want to make sure that uh, they have good downtown development. And I would like to see us have some <coughs> senior projects down there. I'd like to see us have some uh, places that have elevators so it makes it easy to get to your apartment. But we're hopeful and uh, we are marketing out, so we'd like to have it happen. Kara Fox, you have three minutes. Well, obviously, I ditto on a lot of those those key points there. Um, obviously, the area is in our downtown Vacaville City area, and this area has been bought up over the years by the redevelopment, which now long, you know has been dissolved as of February 2012. Uh, the city has had to pay back some money for that, and so of course that has hurt the general fund. Um, unfortunately, this has jeopardized many projects down in the downtown business area. I do feel like um, this area does need to be developed as soon as possible. It is um, not only an eyesore, but it has attracted transient and homeless people into the area and I feel like the crime rates have definitely gone up on these properties that sit vacant and um, it just attracts blight. I believe that once this development takes place our city will see the immediate positive effects from it. So it's just a matter of time before we can get that taken care of. Um, I, I do feel like it's a shame that it sits, and I do feel like that it could be a nice mixed use of housing. I would agree that it does need some probably senior housing, um, definitely a mixed use of lower income and um, nice upscale apartments to go ahead and, you know, those, those people will shop, dine downtown Vacaville, and I think that that is um, definitely what our downtown area needs. I think it should be a top priority of the city that we get that area developed as soon as possible. Thank you. Measure N will expire in 2018. 
How do you propose to handle the looming structural deficit? Do you plan on extending Measure M? Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. Um, measure M is a temporary tax measure of a quarter of a percent, and it uh, sunsets, as you said, in four years. One of the mistakes that we could make is we could spend long-term debt on short-term revenue. Measure M is going to go away in four years. Uh, I would be opposed to spending that money for things that are going to cost long-term debt. I do support that money for capital improvement projects. Uh, limited term agreement arrangements. You may recall that I at council suggested we do the vehicle replacement fund again for police, fire, and public works. And we use some of the Measure M money for that. The second important thing to understand about Measure M is it gets captured in the general fund. So if you look at the general fund and you go, oh, they're flush, they're doing great. The fact is Measure M is going to generate about three to four million dollars a year that's going to go away. So I think that we need to look at Measure M and evaluate the general fund realistically and to understand that that's short-term revenue. Measure M, uh, I want to tell everybody how thankful this council was that you approved it. Uh, I, as you heard in my introduction, I'm involved in the California League of Cities and I went to a training on getting measures passed and one of the gentlemen from Redondo Beach was talking about how great it was that they had a 61% support of their measure. And I laughed at him and I said, we had an 82% support. We really had a wonderful city that supported that. Whether to continue it or not is the question. And I think what I would probably do, because I tend to do that anyway, is I would analyze it. I would probably hire somebody to take a look at whether there's an appetite to continue it, if we continued it, I'd ask the voters to have a very clear understanding as to how it's going to be used. We did that in the first time, which made it successful. We told them it's going to be reserves, it's going to be services. Uh, the voters approved that, knowing that that was the limitations. So I would, I would consider looking at it and seeing whether or not it had a chance to pass. Uh, I'd also want to compare it to other uh, sales tax initiatives to make sure we're not taxing out private businesses because, again, there's a, there's a fine line. If you raise your taxes too much, your economic development then isn't as, as positive. So you have to evaluate all those. But I, uh, I certainly would not support any expenditures of Measure M on long-term debt. Kara Fox, you have three minutes. I, too, supported um, Thackerville's Measure M for the second time in 2012. And these funds were promised to provide and maintain essential services, general municipal services and facilities. And these included to, these included but weren't limited to police and fire, ambulance service, gang suppression, street repair, park maintenance, recreation programs. The list goes on. Um, the measure genera generates roughly $4 million a year and is set to expire in 2018. Now, the question is, does Measure M monies enhance our services and is it worth paying the tax in the future? Our city is, in, is faced with increased property crimes such as burglary, theft, vandalism, and loitering. With these crimes left unattended, larger crimes such as drug trafficking, prostitution, gang activity will increase. So our emergency services that are supported by some of this Measure M money, the, the funds are short unless we have this money. Our police department and emergency services are short staffed at this time. And our businesses and citizens deserve to have increased protection in our city. Um, our city leadership is responsible for this. We are responsible for looking at the revenue and expenses and coming up with solutions to be able to be proactive in these types of situations. You know, I'm a business owner, I live downtown, I see the crime coming in, I see the services being taken away and, and it, 
of great concern to me. And, you know, this Measure M money, it's a temporary fix. We have to look at long-term solutions, not temporary fixes. So I, I would make it a point to address this issue immediately so that we don't come, at, come around to, two, you know, 2018 and go, oh no, what are we going to do? Let's vote it in again. It has to be addressed before then. Thank you very much. Councilman Mashburn, you have three minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, you. You've heard me talk several times tonight about strategic uh, development, and um, to that end, we need to be strategic in our in our spending as well. When we talk about Measure M, Measure M, as, as Councilman Hunt said, are one-time monies. It sunsets, it goes away. So to spend them on a, a, uh, a long-term debt would, be, would not be appropriate. But when we went to the public and said we had a need in Bakugo, <laughs> it was for the shoring up of the city from an economic standpoint and from a continued provision of service or a service level to the citizens of Bakugo. Because of the economic downturn, there has been a dramatic decrease in that service level. Um, and as we move forward and our economy is coming out of those dark times, we need to look at using those monies appropriately to be able to grow business and industry and our community that raises our tax base, that raises ongoing funds for those services. So we, I guess to, to, to make it simple, we need to spend a little money to be able to make a little money and to make money that we can use on a permanent basis to assure those services are in place. Right now, we have a fire station that is, is scheduled to be built in Southtown that was identified in 2003 as a need for the city of Vacaville when that development took place. That would be a one-time expenditure that would in all probability be an appropriate use of those types of funds. It's a one-time expenditure. Would I be supportive of a continuation of Measure M? As long as Measure M was through an analysis found to be generating or creating a revenue stream for the city and the citizens and creating services that were ongoing and supportable for the citizens of Vacaville, then I feel it's something that should be supported. If through analysis it's found that those investments aren't making sense and that, that, that we're not spending the money appropriately, then it should not be supported and continued. But I think that's something that has to be looked at after three to four years of good planning, good investment, and, and economic development and turnaround. Our final question for this forum is, the Vacaville Chamber of Commerce Ombudsman Committee has recently partnered with the City of, City of Vacaville in creating a Starting Your Business in Vacaville guide that will assist new businesses in navigating the process of opening their business. To make this process even smoother, the Vacaville Chamber of Commerce is creating a mentorship and consultation program. Do you see value in these programs, and how can you, as a council member, help this process? Kara Fox, you have three minutes. Okay, well, um, obviously I think the program is wonderful. And going back to the economic development, I, I definitely feel like I know we have the, uh, you know, the Economic Development Committee at work. I definitely feel like our city is in need of an Economic Development Director to lead the charge on this recovery for our city. This is a great program um, that the Chamber has come up with, working with the city to go ahead and promote um, businesses coming into our city through a mentoring um, type program and also consulting with local business businesses to go ahead and give guidance to these new businesses coming in. You know, we talked about efficiency in the city, and I think that's one area that in the city um, departments we can really focus on so that new businesses coming in don't feel like they're in the dark and being left out. So I would say that this is a great program. 
it's a step in the right direction, along with the Economic uh, Development Committee. I think there's, you know, the, another step in the right direction. But I think it's a combination of, of those things, plus putting a director in there and um, really focusing on the business community and how we're, at, like I said, at a crossroads right now. We need to take advantage of that. And, and this program, um, I really do see the value in mentoring and consult. So, yes, thank you. Councilman Mashburn, you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, I absolutely see value in, in an on, on program and program in any program that the chamber brings forward or any other business group, uh, Rotary, any civic group would bring forward uh, uh, to the city and to, to businesses. Um, it brings to mind a, uh, a quote from Ronald Reagan, the, uh, the scariest word that he ever heard where I'm from the government, I'm here to help. <laughs> and, uh, uh, so we're, the government's in the business of government, business is in the business of doing business. We should be listening to you, we should be supportive of you, we should not be dictating to you how to do that. So any programs that you develop that that are going to, going to be a benefit to local businesses or that we can bring to industry and show them and say, this is what our local business is doing uh, uh, to support <coughs> growth and to support the economy in our area, we would like to, to bring you into that. We should, we should be supportive of that. Um, to that end, what could I bring and what could I do to help? I would gladly be, be willing, on a personal level, to be an ombudsman for government. If somebody needs an ear, that's my job as a council person. If somebody needs an ear, if somebody needs to know how to get, navigate the planning process, if somebody is running into an obstruction uh, uh, at the city level and needs some help from a government ombudsman, ombudsman, I would gladly volunteer my time to be able to do that and be supportive of that and work with the chamber or, or again any other civic organizations who wanted to do that. Um, that that's, what you, that's what you hired me for. Um, and I would also be supportive of, of an education for city staff. Um, one of the things that I have found in my other job is that when you cross train folks, their understanding of people's uh, issues grows incredibly. So for city staff to be in your shoes for a day or a week, for you to come to the city and to understand our process for a day um, so that we can look for ways that we can improve services and we can improve efficiencies, I think would be a wonderful thing and I would be very supportive of that and I would be glad to help put something like that together should it be something you would want to move forward with. But those are the things that I think we should be doing with, with, this pro with these programs and, and I applaud you and appreciate you bringing forward the programs that you do have. <laughs> Councilman Hunt, you uh, have three minutes. I got two of them now. <laughs> um, starting a business is a scary thing. I admire people, and I happened to sit on the Solano Economic Corporation, and they did a study, and they said like 80% of the businesses in Solano County have fewer than 10 people. Uh, we think about Genentech, we think about the big, big businesses, but starting a small business is scary. I would advocate for something that's really specific. I think people need help with resources. Uh, they need help on how to do uh, the human resources, human development. They need help on how to get through the Affordable Care Act and what's going on with that as a small business. Where does that affect you? They need help in marketing. How does, it, how does the business get marketed? How, does, how do we get a website? How do we get our Facebook page? How do we get our linkages? Uh, I think they're gonna need some help in obtaining small business loans. Those are very confusing for people and young people. In fact, I was at Buckingham School today giving a talk in government and the question I had from the student was how to start a business. He's starting his own business. Um, I think incubator programs to help people with uh, sharing things. We also could tie there several loosely uh, kind of business groups. I was actually speaking a couple weeks ago at um, a conference actually and it was called Successful Thinker Conference. I don't hardly know why I fit into that, but I was asked to come to the Successful Thinker Conference. And I think there's opportunities for us to link those uh, informal relationships. I do attend the business issues meeting. I'm at most of the business issues meeting. We have an opportunity there to talk about it. Uh, particularly, I think I'd like to refer to the incentive programs and see if the businesses can fit into that so we can help with some financial resources. 
And then the last specific thing that I would advocate for us is to work more closely with the city so we can get them on our website. We have a very strong buy local uh, website. Uh, Mark Monsafaro maintains it. And any small business should come to us and be on that website to buy local and uh, to make sure that we really encourage people to use local businesses. So uh, I think the small business is important and I look forward, if I had an opportunity to be a mentor, I'd be more than happy to do that. Uh, and anything I can do to support, support small businesses. Thank you all for your informative answers. We will now end this forum with closing remarks. We will begin with Councilman Mashburn. You have three minutes. Well, I just want to thank you all for the opportunity to be here tonight. I want to thank you for the opportunity to share some of my opinions and views and, and some of those of the folks that I've talked with in the community. Um, I look forward to the, this race. Um, it, there, there, there is no loser in this race. You have three wonderful candidates who are all very capable folks um, who all have the best interests of Vacaville at heart. I commit to you that, that given the opportunity to be reelected, that I will serve you to the best of my ability as I have for my entire adult life. I have been in public service and I will continue to serve and I continue to use every resource that I have available to me, the training that I have, um, and, and no small level of, of uh, excitement in making sure that Vacaville remains a, a safe, vital, and, and wonderful place to live. And so I, just, I thank you all tonight for being here. And Councilman Hunt, you have three minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for participating tonight. And, and like Mitch says, there's, there's nobody up here that doesn't have the best interest in the city. During an election, I think there's a tendency sometimes to say that we need a new direction, we need a new perspective, new eyes. But frankly, that's not the case in Vacaville. This council has demonstrated leadership during the most demanding times. We have strategically planned and implemented effective fiscal policies that have moved us forward in a positive direction. In the business of being on a council, it's what have you done for me today? And when I get on council, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to ask council to create a strategic plan for recovery so we can staff up and be ready. And I'm going to ask council to look at this thing called the California Municipal Fis Fiscal Health Diagnostic, Diagnostic Tool. This is an independent uh, project that will help us evaluate our city council and our city's finance. I want us to complete that. Vacaville is a desirable place to live. We have been voted by the Relocation Realtors of America the top 10 place to live. Vacaville enjoys the second lowest unemployment in all of Solano County. Our employment rate is 5.4%. Marin, the lowest unemployment in the state is 4.6%. And you know what? I think we're going to catch him. ICON, 500 to 1,000 jobs. And the CEO announced the reason, as I said, it was business friendly, but I just felt like home. Biotech resurgent. Genentech, 352 jobs. Lilly, 500 jobs. Kaiser Hospital Trauma Center and Labor Delivery expansions. North Bay expansions. Cancer Center and Exercise Facility. Downtown Improvement, continuing to work with that to have viable things. Nut Tree expansions, 98% of the Nut Tree is full. 98%. Opportunity House. Theater DeVille. Theater DeVille was done during this council, and this council worked, worked hard to get Theater DeVille. I'm going to leave you with a triangle. On this side of the triangle is education and experience. This side of the triangle is aptitude and skills. The bottom of the triangle is commitment. I have all of those. I have the education and experience to be involved in the city. I have the aptitude and the skills. I have the commitment. Vacaville needs an independent leader who makes informed decisions based on the needs of the entire city. Vacaville needs a leader who has courage to make the tough decisions a leader who can promote the city and develop partnerships to bring jobs to the community, a leader with the understanding of the budget and government. And I am humbly and deeply appreciative of your support on this election. I'm asking for your vote. Karen Fox, you have three minutes. Well, I wanted to say thank you all very much for being here this evening. I've lived in Vacaville for over 40 years. And I've watched the town grow from a population of 24,000 to over 90,000 people. I have a vested interest in this community, and I sell Vacaville on a daily basis. 
I feel I have a strong pulse on this community as well. And I'm also willing to listen to, and, and I want to hear from each of you. I'm available to meet in person, by phone, email, to hear your thoughts and opinions on how you feel the city can improve. You can contact me at 707-548-5392, and I look forward to your call. In closing, I request that the Vacaville Chamber of Commerce endorse me as a strong business supporter and as your next member of Vacaville City Council. And I thank you again for your time this evening. Thank you. On behalf of the Vacaville Chamber of Commerce's backpack, I would like to once again thank all the candidates for their participation in this candidate forum.